morning. My name is Dr. Jessica Mosley, and I am one of your hosts here for the Vantage Point. To my right are some phenomenal women. All the way to the far right, we have uh, Crystal Dunn, then Jennifer Rogers, and Takoya Porter right here to my right. Today's topic is a little bit touchy, but I wanted to entitle it, Leave My Judas Alone. <laughs> 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 because we're going to be talking about um, what... Um, you know, I think sometimes in our in our age we call it haters, but um, I think, or you could say betrayal, whatever you want to call it. But I really want to hone in on what a um, how sometimes those Judases in your life really do propel you and push you into your purpose. But before I go into my spiel, I want to ask the ladies: Has anybody ever been betrayed? Jenny, don't say that you've never been betrayed. I like she's giving me that look. Is any, oh no, seriously, have you ever been betrayed? Because I believe that betrayal can only come from someone that's really close to you. So have you ever felt the sting of betrayal? Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh. You I'm asked the question, I answered it, yes. Okay, how did you handle that? Not well. Well, tell us, tell no, us about I'm not, it. I'm not, I'm not doing that, no. Okay, Crystal, have you ever been betrayed? Have you ever felt the sting of it? Yes. How did you handle it? <laughs> I'm just glad. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I can honestly say it's been a long time now. Um, but I, I don't know that I handled it well um, because I, t I took it very, the things, not just once, but during the experiences, I took it very personal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I can talk more about the side effects than I can the actual betrayals. Mm -hmm. um, because the side effects left you not trusting anybody. Mm -hmm. um, it produced this wall um, that I put up and it took a very long time to get that down because once you've been betrayed, hurt, or your trust has been you know, destroyed in a certain scenario or situation, for my personality, it's hard to give that back. It's very hard. Why? Um, because the way I'm wired, I'm a very loyal person. You know, I, I don't have a, what I would call a huge circle, but my, everybody that is in my close circle or immediate friends and family, I care hard, you yeah. know? And if I've already broken down those barriers for that relationship, and then you do something to make me feel unsafe or like I can't trust you, my cutoff is very strong. I was like, oh, okay. I can just move on. Even though I'm hurt, my response is just leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Takoya Porter. <laughs> my whole name, my government name. The government um, name. Have I ever been betrayed? Absolutely. How did I handle it? Well, it varies. I think it varies according to the um, relationship I have with that person. I think when people have crossed me or or betrayed me or, you know, kind of sold you, threw you under the bus, sold you out, whatever. If they're not very, very, very close to me, I am better at being very mechanical with mm -hmm. my responses. Mm -hmm. I, am, mm -hmm. I am a person who, I am extremely emotional, but in a very cerebral way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I That's going to be the explanation. I get it. I get it. So the more emotional I feel, the more I, I'll sit down and just say, okay, think about this first, process this before you let everybody see how you feel and let's just, and that's easier to do when a person's not quite as close to you. Right. Mm -hmm. With things that were closer and I couldn't just run from or avoid that person or just leave them, um, that, that takes a lot more internal work uh, because I really don't want to be bitter, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't like you. I want to argue, <laughs> argue some points with that because we see where Judas betrayed Jesus, right? Now, I love that story. Mm -hmm. None, it's one of my right? Favorites. But we also see where Peter betrayed him. Because we've all, I believe that we've all at one point in time have been a Peter. We may not acknowledge it. Like, oh, I did. We've all been a Peter. But Peter got an opportunity to change his heart, to get his heart right. What do we do in those instances when a person, because you described it as, I'm a loyal person. If somebody betrays me, then my cutoff game is strong. Don't we all have to give a person the grace to grow? Maybe, and I think that it can be, I think the older I get, the more I'm learning that 
it's not as big as I think it is, or, or the mountain that I've made in my mind. I'm not saying that. What If they did something that, I mean, there's some things that you just be like, okay, I'm not gonna put you back in this space in my heart. Mm -hmm. But is that still fair as well? So let's be clear. The foundation okay. is gonna always go back to even when I've been hurt, whatever the situation is, the idea and the plan is always to come back and line up with the word of God. It's just sometimes it takes a little longer than others. You know, you're like, God, you know, I'm still considering myself, so I really can't approach them yet, mm -hmm. uh, or I'm not ready to deal with it. But the end result is always to do it the Bible way. I mean, my measuring stick is always to do them like God did me, you know, and he doesn't, he doesn't beat me up with my past. He doesn't make me remember, mm -hmm. not for beat up purposes. He uh -huh. will remind me where he's brought me from, but he doesn't use it to beat me up or make me feel like I'm in debt forever because I did something to him or I let him down. I look at Peter as he let God down. To me, Judas betrayed him. And that might be something we could argue yeah, and vague, that point. Yeah. but I, I feel like he let him down. Now, God knows everybody's heart. I don't know your heart. Mm -hmm. I just know you hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you woke up to, you plan to do that or it just happened. God knows all things. So again, to me, the foundation is gonna always go back to him and be like, God help me with this. Cause I really do want to be saved. Then my question is what is true forgiveness? Like if a person does something, I mean, cause people always try to put one sin above the other. Like, oh, well they did this. And I mean, and yes, I think, I don't know. I can't remember which one it was of you. I don't want to say that, that we were talking about, well, now that's another thing. My mind is going faster than what I can speak in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, then what is true forgiveness? Like, do we, I thought forgiveness, somebody defined forgiveness as putting someone back in the place that they norm, that they, that they original, originally were before the offense. Again, that might be the goal, but mm -hmm. the process or the time to get there for you might be faster, for Tukoy, it might be slower, Jenny, it might be instantaneously. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but that's always the end goal. But at the same time, I think we're talking about what we did or how we got there. Mm -hmm. It took time. Now I like, okay, and I know I'm not answering your question yet. I'm, that's really what I'm not doing. I just want uh, that on record. But <laughs> because I just want to backtrack a little bit because I think the forgiveness thing is so huge. Right. But defining betrayal is too because mm -hmm. um, you brought up Peter and I'm, I was sitting here trying to think, okay, did Peter betray Jesus? Um, he denied him. Is that what you're talking about? I'm talking about when he denied him. Was it, so was, is that a form of betrayal? I think, I get where you're coming from, but I don't think it's the same category as Judas. Judas pretended to have him in one place and then sold him completely the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas what Peter did, heard him, but it didn't sell him out at the same time in some ways. I don't know, because it was during the same time. No, it, it was I'm, not, I'm not saying he was right. I'm not saying he's right. I just don't know that I define it as betrayal. I don't know, but you said you had a, you, you could fight that out. Go for it. I'm gonna fight that out. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting on him. What you gotta say? I don't have anything to say about that. You don't have anything? Not, okay, not, because I, my I, thing, it was, it was during the <laughs> same, no. it was during the same time, right? It was during the crucifixion. He had other times to betray, I mean, to deny Jesus. But it was during the time of that he was about to be killed, murdered, uh, massacred. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, during my weakest moment, if you give me up or you disassociate yourself with me, that's betrayal to me. It was during his weakest, most vulnerable time in his life. And you gave me up. Well, you said, I, I don't know, I, you know, you did that. But, but I think there was some self-preservation in that and and I'm glad you used that you word. Know. So you're trying to preserve yourself, and I'm about to die. Oh, I, he wasn't right. He wasn't right. right. No, I'm not. I'm not claiming that he was right. Or, I'm, well, either or. But still, he was the one that Jesus turned around and gave the keys to the kingdom. See, and I'm I'm torn even on looking at the definitions because then you know I always look up definitions. <laughs> uh -huh. But these are Google definitions, uh -huh. so. <laughs> just like but um, you know, one of them, one of the synonyms is disloyal. So I agree he was disloyal. Mm -hmm. There's no way he wasn't disloyal. But then another definition says to give over to an enemy by treason or treachery, betray. Um, 
And I don't know that he gave him over to the enemy. I guess that's where it differs slightly mm -hmm. for me. He was completely disloyal, and I guess if that's a synonym for betrayal to you, then yes, he was disloyal. He, he betrayed him in that regard. Uh, but did he give him over? See, what Judas did to me takes a lot more forgiveness, and that's always been a model for me in scripture. Even when I dealt with that in the ministry side of things, and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, God, they're stabbing me in the back. Like, I can see the plot. I know this is happening. And, um, he just taught me about Judas. And that's mm -hmm. when I said Judas is one of my favorite characters in the yes. Bible because Jesus showed me how he handled Judas. Mm -hmm. He handled Judas in such a way nobody would have known who Judas was until Judas finished what he, he came to do. All the whole time. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he knew, knew the, the whole time. time. But he bowed he was and washed his feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. He gave him the money back. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, mm -hmm. he, and he just kept loving and putting him in position to betray him, knowing that that was in his heart to betray him. So that, that spoke volumes to me about how I'm to handle people even if they betray me. Mm -hmm. now, now, emotionally, where does my heart catch up with that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that does. My heart inside takes longer than my outward actions mm -hmm. usually. Yeah. But I think you have to constantly be reminded that I'm nobody. Yeah. And if they can do that to Jesus, who was Jesus, I'm nobody. That's why stuff like that doesn't, it, while it bothers me, it does not deter me from who I am and what I am called to do because I, I feel like, you know, I'm nobody. Of course they can do that to me. Mm -hmm. Who do I think I am that they can't do that to me? You know what mm -hmm. I'm, I, I didn't, I can't put myself above God, right? Mm -hmm. So I always go back to that story and I'm like, the Bible says do good to them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That despitefully use you and speak all manner of evil against you. Man. Do good to them. Do and, good to them. And so I find myself giving. Mm -hmm. Baby, you better And preach. while I don't want to. And, and, it, and to me, the forgiveness happens when there's no longer emotion tied to yeah. that, that situation or that person mm -hmm. in a sense that I don't change the direction I'm going because you're standing there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I might start off that way, um, but once I can you know, and I always, I always measure myself. If this person came to me and asked me to pray for them, would I be able to do that earnestly? Mm -hmm. And that's a problem for me. It's mm -hmm. not a problem for them, right? They got to deal with their own stuff and why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with how I respond to it and how do I let that limit me or not limit me um, to be able to help them. Because when people do stuff to you, there's something wrong with them, right? There's something broken there, right? And, and you know, hurt people, they say hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't negate that there's, there's something wrong when you do something maliciously against another person. There's something wrong emotionally, mentally with you to do that. But what is it and how can I help you? You know, so that's just how I think about it. We're going to go a little bit deeper in this conversation when we come back, because I do want to tell you uh, the difference between Judas and Peter. And, no, seriously, I do. And I, <laughs> I love this conversation. You are watching The Vantage Point, and we will be right back. Thank you. Did you know that when you are quiet, your voice is missing to God's ears? I know some of us have prayed and we're wondering, how long should I pray about this? Why should I pray if God already knows? How will I know God is answering? And what do I do when I feel like God's not listening? But God is listening for your voice. It's too quiet in this world for the troubles we have. You have to raise your voice and God wants to hear from you. It's Too Quiet, a book about prayer, is designed to answer your prayer questions and build your faith. Visit PressToPray.com. Your teenager, naturally pushing the rules to their limits. When they push too far, call the Boys Town National Hotline at 800-448-3000. Our trained counselors are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week to provide advice and resources for problems big or small. National forests are essential to life. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions of Americans, and provide homes to countless wildlife. But fires and natural disasters destroy millions of trees each year. That's why we're replanting our forests from coast to coast. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Everybody 
to the Vantage Point. I'm Jessica Mosley, and we are going to um, continue our conversation about Leave My Judas Alone. Um, before I, I ask a group another question, I wanted to say that I prefer, having walked out some of the things that I've walked out in the last couple of years, it has made me know that God truly does use everything. Everything is, if he allows it to happen to me, it is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was for purposes that he's put into my life to be fulfilled. Because some things I would have never done had I not been betrayed. I had been putting some things off, but had it not happened, I know I wouldn't have walked into the calling that God has placed on my life or the things that he's uh, blessed my hands to be able to do. And I wanna say that when dealing with a Judas, especially, and, I, and just like uh, Tequoia made point, or it was either Tequoia or Jenny, that Jesus knew who Judas was the whole entire time. I don't believe that you can walk with God and be ignorant to who is around you that means you harm. There have been instances where God has told me, okay, get rid of them. Or to continue, or instances where, he, where I have to continue on with them because they are fulfilling the purpose. Judas fulfilled a purpose. He called him a friend. He said, friend, betray us down me with the kiss because there will be a time when you will have to acknowledge who they are to you. He said, friend, betray, like I know who you are, friend. But then when Peter turned around and tried to stop him from going to the cross, he called him Satan because he was trying to stop the purpose of God. So my question becomes this, if I gotta keep you around, because has anybody had to ever keep a Judas around? Definitely. Why are you looking at yeah. me? You looking at me? Why is she looking at me like that? Uh, no, that's not. No, <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. but have you ever had to keep one around, or had to continue to be around them? Like I know who you are. See, because there's some character that God is developing you in through that, too. Because and there's certain things that he that he has to entrust into your hands. Because had you not been betrayed. Would you be the woman that you are today? No. You know, I, I, I can keep you around, but it's not like it's not going to be addressed. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's so what I said. I, Eventually, he Yeah, I can. Her. As long as, as we're clear that I know you did that, I'm okay. But I, I just need, I, I need, for me, I need to be able to address because for me, I have to be able to let it go. It's either you let it go or you have a conversation about it mm -hmm. and let it go. E either one, you're gonna have to let it go. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not fake, and that would make Does me that make fake. You not fake it would you make me totally it? fake if I didn't address it because I mm -hmm. still got feelings about it. If I still yeah. got issues with it and I'm just smiling at you, I can't do that. I just won't fool with you, right? I just, mm -hmm. I just won't fool with you. Um, but I do have this ability to file people away. <laughs> <laughs> that oh my really don't know they've been filed away because I've decided like, I'm I just going to let make an that, announcement that I'm done with you. you don't know. Uh, I'm letting that relationship go. But if you need something, what I get from that relationship is no longer there. But mm -hmm. I'm fine with you getting whatever you need to get from me. But I, my expectations, I don't have any. So I know how to file people away in a sense that I'm no longer expecting anything from you. You know but what I'm saying? But is that a so, form of bitterness? Because probably. Yeah, because remember when, <laughs> no, 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 because you know what, remember when Pastor came to us at, the, at the, uh, Wish TV, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about. Wish hey, TV, where we do our podcast, yeah, that right. you can check out on our yes. website. Yes, well, let me just finish this. I was, um, and we were, whatever, I forgot what is, uh, the whole topic, but he started dealing with the sycamore tree because mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was bitter about it. I got free that day. And I told you about it. Yeah, because so like, it was I a conversation free. with you and Pastor. We would just listen. Okay, to but it. nevertheless, okay. we, I didn't know that I was dealing with bitterness mm -hmm. because now I can see that person and have seen them and was like, hey! And I, when I got in my car, I couldn't believe my reaction when I saw them mm -hmm. because the, the root of bitterness was no longer there. So I think that that's another form of bitterness. If I, you, you know, feel, I don't, I don't, it's, it, I don't know, I just, once I once you show me who you are, yeah. I'm okay with you being who you are. Yeah. And I'm gonna let you be who you are. Yeah. Right? But I get to decide what I want to be influenced and have a part of my life. I get to decide that. So I maybe you no longer have the influence or maybe yeah. you no longer have the impact that you once had, but I'm okay with that too. Now I've been healed so. from it. That's what I say. 
Yeah, I, you could call the it office. that. But I'm just like, once people show you who you, who they are, I'm not trying to change you. Exactly. You can be whoever you want to be. Yeah. I just get to decide what I want to be a part of my life. So. And that's what. And you know, remember the sermon? Well, I heard it at Logan Park first. The mess in the ark. Well, none of us went to Logan Park. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I've no, never no. heard that. You I never, you never heard, you never heard. So, I need so to uh, <laughs> no, and, and it really changed my perspective about a lot of things, because I uh, what, it. you understand what I'm saying? Because I was like, there are going to be times. I'm not, listen, in the church, out of the church. I'm not, it's certain things we're not just gonna be able to wish yeah. people away, yeah. you know? And you're gonna have to walk through that. Mm -hmm. But am I gonna go through years and years and years of not really dealing with you because of, you understand what I'm saying? Because of, I just can't live my life like that. And then the more I began to pray for the person and I got free from that thing, you know? But you were the reason that I'm telling you Leave my Judas alone. <laughs> Leave him alone. Leave her alone because they propelled me into a place with God that I never thought I would be had you not betrayed me. I wouldn't be Jessica. Well, this Jessica. Mm -hmm. And I am happy. I'm like, like, you know, people get up and say, this joy I have. Mm -hmm. the world, <laughs> I never thought that I could get to that place. Like, I'm like, okay, I got, I'm happy. But I don't know if I could ever have that. But I got it mm -hmm. because you propelled me into my purpose. Anybody got something to say? I'm, <laughs> I'm doing too much today. I didn't even mean to go there. It's all right. I think I think it's important. You asked the question. Do you like? Do you keep them around? I think you have to. Well, we yeah. sit here, most of us are in ministry, and she's in a form of ministry in terms of service that she just, you know, doesn't call that. Mm -hmm. um, Your mama but, told me it was ministry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I know you don't always say that, but it is. Um, but when you think about ministry, or you, you have to serve people, mm -hmm. and a, a servant never chooses who they serve. Mm -hmm. right. They yes. never do. And Jesus came as a servant, and he served Judas in it. He's, but the thing about him, to me, we react often because of what they did. He saw it coming and acted anyway. Mm -hmm. And so that tells me a lot about how I'm supposed to treat people, even when I know mm -hmm. or suspect or feel like it might go that way. And so then when it becomes a reality, like I said, there, there's different levels of processing for me. There really are. Yeah. Um, because on the ministry level, usually I handle that stuff pretty well. Mm -hmm. On a personal level, mm -hmm. mm, there we go with that. I understand the following. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like it's like it's like if we so were once if we were once cool enough for you to drive my car, and I, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. yeah, you could drive my car, then you wreck it. Okay, I'm not mad when you drive somebody else's or practice on them. I'm not telling you to get off the road. I'm you just, just saying never, you ain't driving my car. Never drive my car again. And so that's how <laughs> I feel. Because an accident. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but but I'm not I'm not gonna be the practice one anymore. I'm gonna let you figure out your stuff on them. Yeah. I'm not gonna inhibit it. I'm not gonna talk about you. I'm not even gonna you. tell them you wrecked yeah, my I'm car. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not I, don't, I don't need any of that. But do I let you drive again? No, yeah, no. no, I do not. No. And so I look at that as, hey, I look at that as wise, actually. Yeah, I do too. Um, because you need to <laughs> practice that out. And then, you know, maybe after time, because I'm not mad at you, maybe we'll drive together again, but it won't be until you've practiced. <laughs> and um, no, let me say that's this. the way I look at that. Let me interrupt that. Um, another thing that helped me with it, um, the more I see what God did for me, mm -hmm. right? Romans 5 and 8, wow, we, wow, wow, not wow, we were yet sinners. Definitely. Wow, we were yet sinners. People say, well, that's God. <laughs> well, well, aren't I supposed to be modeling the life of Jesus Christ? I'm not saying that I have it all together. I was mad, you know, I, um, somebody took my car and, well, they hit my car came in and, and ate my food, didn't even tell me, they had stayed in my house for several hours, didn't even tell me that they hit my car. Oh, by the way, I hit your car. I said, well, when were you going to tell me? Because I wouldn't have let you eat my food. I would have got you <laughs> out of here. Just being honest, pray for me. Don't tell my past. <laughs> but I'm being serious. I was ticked. Like, why would you do that? But, I, but that scripture has humbled me. And the more things that God reveals to me, that I've done that I should not have, that I didn't truly deserve his mercy for. It humbles me enough to be like, and I'm, and you know the crazy thing is, 
sometimes my mother always said to me, I, I'm so glad I ain't got your heart. But I'm like, but I got my, my actions from you. I've seen you take in drug addicts and prostitutes that's in our family over and over and over again and, and let them stay for free, all of that stuff. You know, in America, we charge for everything, you know? <laughs> but it just humbles me what Christ did for me. And when he showed, when, especially when he reminds me of things that you deserved, I'd be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to bag down. And I'm a help. Them. Sometimes I'm a secret helper too. They don't even know it's me. I oh, know I like doing stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like. But you know, I, 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 I'm sitting here listening. I'm like, okay. And I believe in giving people another chance and grace to grow. I'm very big on that. But the the question I think even the audience might have is, okay, so then when do we let them back in, or do we have to let them back in? I see. I don't necessarily believe. Now we may not be a good fit. It's not even. It's yeah, not. Yeah, I'm yeah, mad yeah. at you. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not even a crime against humanity. I don't. <laughs> I don't need. I don't need your apologies. I don't need any of that. But what I have done now is grown without you, and I'm okay. Okay, with let that. me argue with you then. Yeah, so, please do. So because Judas, and I know we only got a few minutes, Judas was considered a church person, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not talking about somebody from the world. He's considered so. Is does do we make an exception with that or no? What do you mean an exception? I don't know what you mean. Like would I? Because, I mean, I see you back in, you, you know, in the fold, continuing on under the same teachings. See, I think there should be. <laughs> I do. I'm talking, I about more, I'm talking more about a personal level. Right. Like, okay, yeah. like, are you my friend? Like, yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Do I think because you sin, fail, or even hurt me, that should influence how you operate in ministry? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people I know who've talked about, whatever. And some of them I've watched grow out of it. Mm -hmm. And, that, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that. That's how we all grew up and got mm -hmm. saved, is we had to grow through some changes. But does that mean we're close again, is the question I was asking. I struggle with that, too. Like, am I going to let... I've been really thinking about some stuff. I'm like, what are my boundaries with this? But nevertheless, um, we, you, let me just say this. Pray and ask the Lord to help. <laughs> and tell him what you... I mean, because I just want to... I truly want to have a forgiving heart. I love one of my favorite hymns is Give Me a Clean Heart. I do want my heart to be pure before God. I understand we have some extra seconds though. I truly do want my heart to be pure before God. And I do pray that whatever sycamore tree is um, within you because you were betrayed, that it will be plucked up by the root. You are watching The Vantage Point. Tune in to us next week. Thank you.